A bank is defined as a financial institution licensed to receive deposits and make loans. But when you live below I-30, which is largely black and Hispanic, that's not how it works. Sure, banks take deposits, but we found the branches aren't lending much money back out. So we're gonna do stripes next to colors. Put it solid there. Can you change those two? All right, put that one here. The first time Traswell Livingston tried to buy a home in South Dallas, three banks turned him down. Very frustrating, very disheartening. Um, makes you build up a thick skin. Today he owns a home on an historic block near Fair Park where he says many neighbors don't trust banks. So much discouragement of the bank that they don't even use it or even inquire anymore because they just don't think it's even possible to get a loan. Without home loans, there's no home ownership. And home ownership is an important way for parents to build up and transfer assets to their children. It's an avenue that research shows is missing for many black families. According to the Federal Reserve, by age 55, the rate of home ownership among blacks is 32% lower than it is for whites. And the homes that black families own are worth 35% less. These are key factors behind the racial wealth gap, which hardly exists for young people. But by 75, median wealth for a black family is $46,000, but $302,000 for a white family. Livingston is concerned about some of his neighbors who've lived here for decades and are desperate for a small loan to keep up their properties. But most of them know that you know, that's not gonna happen. Patch it up, close off the door, don't go in that room, and you know, keep moving. And do it with cash. Do it with cash or don't do it at all. In the northern half of Dallas, there are 296 bank branches. In the southern half, there are 55. But 43% of the city's population lives in southern Dallas. That's 560,000 people. And our analysis shows they only get 26% of the home loans. The banks that do have branches in southern Dallas, how are they performing? Neighborhoods in DFW are broken down into census tracts. The one that Livingston lives in includes a Bank of America and a Chase Bank. Government records show in 2018 and 2019 those companies made zero loans in this tract. But let's take a little wider view. We clustered the tract with adjacent tracts to create an area with a population of about 30,000 people that a bank branch might serve. Over two years, Chase made 16 loans in this cluster and Bank of America made 19. By comparison, six miles away in a cluster with the same population, including a Chase and a Bank of America in Lakewood, Chase had 171 loans. Bank of America had 143. That's a smoking gun. John Taylor is a fair lending advocate with a National Community You're Reinvestment there, Coalition. Should banks be investing in creditworthy borrowers in South Dallas, if they can show they can pay these loans back, that they earn enough income, should the banks be doing it? And the answer is, of course, and the answer is, yes, that's the law. And what's the big picture of North Dallas versus South Dallas for the area's three biggest banks, Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo? Well, for Chase's northern branches, there were, on average, 102 loans around each branch. In the south, there were 32. Around Bank of America's northern branches, the average was 67 and 23 down south. And Wells Fargo had 65 in the north and 18 in the South. In a statement, Chase writes, it regularly ranked first or second in Southern Dallas for all mortgage lenders and typically ranked first among banks. However, we recognize that too many people are not sharing in the region's prosperity. In Southern Dallas and within communities of color, we know we can do better. Bank of America says loan data from 2018 and 2019 doesn't capture the bank's more recent affordable home ownership initiative in Southern Dallas, which has recently lent $75 million to 365 low to moderate income borrowers and made $4 million in down payment grants to first time home buyers. Wells Fargo noted on its bank exams, its distribution of loans to low to moderate income borrowers exceeded the aggregate lending and received a rating of good despite affordability challenges in Dallas. If the regulators just raise the question, 
gee, you only made four or five loans in all of South Dallas. What the heck is going on here? That's what examiners, regulators are supposed to do. They won't do it, unfortunately, unless somebody makes an issue of it. Big banks are regulated by the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. In a statement, the OCC says examiners do not have the authority to require a bank to make mortgage loans or to make such loans in a specific area. It also noted other neighborhood factors should be taken into consideration when looking at loan data, like the level of owner-occupied housing, income level, market volatility, and population trends. Bank of America Chase, any of them, if examiners started asking questions about the, the lack of commitment, the lack of level of loans to low and moderate income people in neighborhoods, uh, they'd, they'd sit up and pay attention. They really would. Remember that definition of what a bank is? Well, there's another important word in there, licensed. The government grants banks the right to operate and make their big profits, but in exchange, there are rules including the Community Reinvestment Act. It's a powerful federal law that says banks are required to meet the credit needs of the entire community and reinvest in the minority neighborhoods they've long ignored. We have to confront their greed, and, and, and that's, that's, what, that's what they suffer with. They suffer with greed and racism. Diane Ragsdale is a former Dallas council member who runs a nonprofit helping working families achieve home ownership. The law was created for a reason, because banks refused to lend to low to moderate income communities. But and that so, law doesn't work unless so, the people in those communities use the law, right? That is correct, sir. And so, and that's where a movement comes into play. In the 80s, Ragsdale successfully used the Community Reinvestment Act to pressure banks to make more loans. In the early 90s, she says community pressure is what got the Chase and Bank of America near Fair Park built. And today, she says, pressure can work again. If you have an institution there, what, what, what is your role? Just to sit there and do nothing? Or just to sit there and receive deposits? No. Your role is to get out there and develop relationships with the people, uh, communicate with the people, and determine what I can do to, to meet your lending needs. In order to get banks to live up to their legal obligations, make loans in the neighborhoods in which they operate, and play a role in closing the racial wealth gap, Ragsdale says an organized community movement is what's needed now. We're more than willing to publicly embarrass you because you have, in, in essence, uh, uh, disrespected us and, and, and our needs. In Dallas, I'm David Schechter reporting.